Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, Vicky here with the Untitled Game Show, it's time for something a little cool. As you guys know, I just got a brand new phone, and I have a bunch of little tech devices laying around the house. And I felt like, well, let me see if I try to combine them all together and try to show you guys something really cool. You guys could do at home if you have all these devices laying around, or if you're a YouTuber and you ever thought about actually recording mobile games and oh, ever think about casting your screen to your TV so you can watch movies, YouTube, whatever it might be, look at your photos on a big TV, or even capture the video from your TV, from your phone, to a capture card. Well, take a look at this, guys. So let's go back and use the PS4 controller at that. So let's go over to an application. Let's go over to Sonic. Application we all know, guys. A game we've all played at some time in our life. Sega! So we're going to mute it, guys, just in case any of this music here is in, is copywritten, because you know how that stuff goes. So they go Sonic Episode 4, well, 4, Episode 2. We're going to press X to start. We're going to go ahead and start here. Then we're going to go ahead and jump right into the game. And I'm going to show you some, some gameplay. As you guys see, it's playing right now on my phone. And press play, act. It's going to take a second to load up. It's going to load the app. And then, as you guys see, I'll be going to play right here with my controller. X does jump. Go forward, backwards, everything else without touching the phone. All wirelessly. And it's showing both on my TV. It's showing right here on my computer, and it's showing on my phone. So how do I have the thing on my phone wirelessly be showing on not only my TV, but same time as my capture card on the phone? And that's what I'm going to show you guys. How do I do this in case you guys ever felt like doing mobile games? Like I told you guys, I've had the ability to record mobile games for a long time now, but I've never had something that I've been able to keep the frame rate up and have it be as less laggy as possible. And I think I finally figured out the best method to do it with my current setup. All right, guys, so let's get right into it. Let's jump out of this game right here. All right. I, I could have used a controller too, but I just did it. First thing first, guys. One, I am not sponsored by Sony. I am not sponsored by Google. Not sponsored by Sega or any other companies that I mentioned in this video. My TV, my capture card, anything else I talk about, these companies have not paid me a dime. Who am I sponsored by is you guys, the fans, the people who support me on Patreon. So if you like what I do and interested in these different type of videos that mix gaming and technology together, think about going over to my Patreon page, take a minute, maybe five minutes, read up all the details about what I do here on the Untitled Game Show, and think about subscribing for more videos like these and other different type of videos to enhance your gaming and technology needs. So let's get into it now. So first thing first, guys, let's talk about how to actually cast my screen to my TV and to my computer. Well, that's being done through Chromecast, a little device that costs 30 bucks. All right, guys? Cost costs $30. I've talked about it before. I've done unboxing. It's a cool little device, and it's definitely going to be needed to accomplish this, guys. All right? So once you have a Chromecast, and you should have a Chromecast because if you want to get stuff off your phone to your TV, you're going to need that, right? So how you connect your Sony phone to the Chromecast is two different ways. Now, other phones can do the same exact thing. All right, guys? So what we're going to do right here, I'm going to try to explain it to you. In the Sony settings, they have something called Screencast. And with this application, you just click it, and it's going to find Chrome. And just like that, it's going to show up on the big screen. There's another way to do this as well, all right, guys? The other way to do this is through an application called AllCast. Now, if you're not using a Sony phone or you do not have the feature for um, that, you could use this application right here called AllCast. With AllCast, you can screen everything from your screen and applications as well to a TV or to a Chromecast or anything that has the Chromecast ability. Like I said, guys, you don't have to use a Chromecast. There's other things that use the feature just like Chromecast as well, little Android plug-in things to HDMI. So we're going to disconnect from the Sony built-in Ccast and actually use the AllCast, which costs $5 in the Android store. Once again, this is something I bought. There's a premium version. There's a free version. I bought the premium version so I could use this on different phones. All right, guys? So AllCast is opened up. And just like here, I'm going to go into my album, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a picture. So here's a picture of one of my friends. Me and her went to a, a cosplay event not too long ago, guys. I did a video about this. And you guys should see it on the screen any second once I just press it. Give it a moment. So AllCast is a way slower than the built-in hardware one on the Sony Xperia Z3. But if you have um don't have a Xperia phone, you just might have to be able to use this. All right, guys. So right now it's not showing up yet, just because this is just how AllCast is, guys. It just takes a long time sometimes to um show up, and then you have to disconnect and disconnect back on. So there you go, guys. It just takes a while to do it at times. But 
Allcast is another option, and there's other free versions of things like Allcast that do completely for free. So, uh, these are 20 megabyte videos. Oh man, why is it not showing up? Show it up, show it up, show it up. Uh, all right, let's try. There you go. The video thing goes up. Just give it a moment to buffer, and it should show up. These are problems I've run into Allcast before. That's why I'm glad I have the hardware one. But I can legitimately tell you guys that Allcast does work. I just don't know why it's not working right this moment. <laughs> it's probably because I'm doing all this stuff and my battery's only at 3%. So we're going to stop Allcast, disconnect it, and connect back to the hardware one at the moment. So I guess I'm trying to basically tell you, if your phone has a hardware screener, use the hardware one over the application ones because the application ones are trying to finicky because it doesn't it has to work for every phone compared to the stuff that's built into the phone. All right, the next thing we got to talk about is connecting your PS4 controller or connecting your well, DualShock 3 to your actual phone. All right, guys. So why would I do this? Well, as many of you guys know, I've been gaming since the Super Nintendo or you can if you're a Sony fan, the Sega Genesis days and this Sega Genesis actually was given to me in a donation it was actually donated to me when I first um came to the United States a long long time ago um it was donated to a church and I was so happy for it this is one of the reasons why in many new years I'll actually go to a church and donate my time by preparing food for the homeless that's actually something I've always done like whenever I have a chance on new year's like new year's night at 12 o'clock instead of like going to like of the celebration or hang out with friends if i have the time i will actually do this all right guys so that's just me personally if you don't do stuff like that it doesn't matter that doesn't that nothing to do with this video it's just a fun little extra story and my super nintendo still works the first console i was actually gotten that was myself my own it actually i got this after the x um the n64 was out but the thing about it is that it was the first console it was mine so i didn't care that n64 n64 was out i was glad that i even got a console in the first place especially coming from where I was where I was very poor as a kid, but it doesn't matter. That's a long time history, kind of. All right. So if you if you if you don't want to use um well you know a touch screen because the touch screen is not good for a game like you know Sonic, or a good game for a game like uh, Terraria, what you're gonna have to do, guys, is well you're gonna have to actually well use a controller. To do this, guys, there's a few different ways to do it, and I'm gonna go try to head and explain it to you right now I want you to just fix one little issue I just ran into the casting stopped because my battery is so damn low there you go so I'm one I'm so sorry about this guys I should have charged my battery before I showed you any of this stuff because it seems like my battery being low is kind of disconnecting everything which I did not notice um, before. And off, off, obviously, guys, doing all this is going to extremely, extremely kill your battery. And I'm going to get to how I'm actually capturing the video as well, guys. Don't worry. Everything will be explained in this video. I do not want to make this a short video. I want to take my time and actually show you guys what I actually do. This is not going to be like the 100,000 view video. This sort of view, video is going to probably get like 100 views, but I'm perfectly fine with that. Still actually want to go ahead and show you guys for anybody who does care. So just let that sit there and do its thing. All right, guys. Um, oh, for the controller, right, guys? So what you guys actually have to do. Oh, God, man. Phone, stop dying. When I get to 60%, it seems like it just wants to disconnect it. So that must be something with the hardware feature. Like, it's doing power saving settings. Let me see. Power management. Q background data. No, don't, don't do any of that stuff. Just, just have everything off. Okay. There we go. To connect the controller, there's two ways to do it, guys. You need to go to Xperia Connect, go to DualShock. Um, oh, crap. Still not showing it. Screencast. I'm so sorry, guys. All right, Chromecast. Come on, phone. I just need you to do this for the next few minutes. I don't need you to stay on forever. Plug in charge. All right, go Xperia Connect. You need to go to DualShock 3, switch so DualShock 4. You can pick whichever controller for the DualShock 4. There's two ways to do it. Well, there's one way, easy way to do it. Just basically put it on the home button and the um, share button, and it's going to make the backlight flash. And once the backlight flashes, it connects this to your phone. And once you connect it back to the PS4, it's going to disconnect it from your phone. So that's basically how it works. All right, guys? Um, this is the same way you could connect your PlayStation 3 controller 
I mean your PS4 controller to your PS4. So if you want to use your PS4 controller as a PS3 controller, that's how you do it. You just basically press the home button and the share button at the same time. It flashes, flashes and just connect it to your Bluetooth and you're done. As simple as that. For a PS3 controller, as you guys will see right here, it's a little bit more complicated, but I did actually go ahead and have the devices ready just so I could show you guys what you would have to do for a PS3 controller. Um, I currently have a broken PS3 controller right here that I've had for a long time. I've just been lazy not wanting to fix it yet um, because I lost I don't know where the hell the numb pads are but whenever I do find these numb pads it'll obviously go could fix it because that's just the type of person I am I'll just sit there and fix it and get it working but what you need is a PS3 wire and then you need one of these cables this allows you to plug the um, one end into your phone so this plugs into your phone this plugs into the charging cable of the PS4 so like one end goes into the controller and one end goes into here and then goes into your phone and then you just need to basically click on PlayStation 3 connect it to your phone and then you just go through the process of um, pairing it out but right now I'm connected to it by the DualShock 4 so no point actually showing you guys that but it does actually work and these cables cost from um, one dollar up to um, three dollars for this little piece right here you can buy a separate cable that's official from eight to twenty dollars so that's up to you guys you can buy these literally in stores like there's stores that sell these things like for almost nothing if you buy them online you're gonna have to pay shipping it's gonna cost you a lot of money so you might not want to do this unless you do it as like a add-on item on like an Amazon cart shopping because add-on items is when you spend more than I think it is like thirty five dollars they'll put this in the cart for no shipping so that's like the only verified way to do it without having to pay shipping. Maybe eBay sells it like with free shipping for 99 cents, but you know how eBay can be. You don't even know if it's going to work with eBay. <laughs> so the other last thing to find out, guys, is how do I actually capture my screen? The way I'm doing that is using my little application and program here, which is the Aver Meteor HD capture card, which is now connected directly to my computer. So once it's connected to my computer, I can open up your Record Central, which is what you guys are seeing right here on my TV over here. Um, that's Record Central there, and with Record Central, I can press the record button and instantly record the capture card and record. Well, everything was. I'm capturing the HDMI that's going from the um, the Chromecast. So if I didn't say this before. I have a splitter, HDMI splitter, the one you've seen on my videos before, guys, because I've done videos on how I capture gameplay. So if you guys don't know how I capture gameplay, basically, I have a lot of splitters and stuff just hooked up so I can do stuff like this. So I don't have to bundle wires up very much. I use splitters, and these splitters work very well because, as you guys see, basically no lag. If there's any lag, it's because this TV has a 6 millisecond lag when this TV has like a 2 millisecond lag. So there's a big difference there. And as you guys might be seeing right up here, the recording button is so it's actually fully recording my screen right now. If I went into a game, it would record my screen. And if I played, I played a song, which I'll try to find a, um, I'll have, I have copy, I have royalty free music on my phone. So let me try to find some royalty free music so I can play it so YouTube doesn't go nuts. So there we go, royalty free music. Find something louder. My phone turned off. Alright. Alright, whatever, guys. I can verify 100% the sound works. That's why I muted it in the first place. I think everything's just been screwing up with me because I like I, I had the battery low this time. So I that is my mistake on that, guys. So. Sorry about that, but definitely if you wanted to listen to your music, if you wanted to record the sound, you definitely could do that too. Alright guys, so that does work. Um, let's just try to disconnect and then reconnect and just see if it could get it to work right now. Just to show you guys. I don't want to be like, oh, it works, and then you guys get it and say it don't work. So I don't want to recommend something and then not be able to demonstrate it. So I'm just not that type of guy. I'll make this video go long if you guys are willing to watch it. Alright. Why is it now I can't hear it? So weird. It was working perfectly fine before. All 
All right, I'm not gonna waste time going along with this thing. It works, I can guarantee it works. Only thing I can say is, since I've been getting close to 6%, everything's just kind of screwing up. I don't know if that's something with me. And just let that be. So point being, if you're a YouTuber and you want to record your gameplay without interfering with your actual, um, like your system performance, because on this specific phone, if I press down the home button, I mean the power button, there's this thing that's called record screen. So I can literally record my screen while, oh, you guys can't see it there, but it pops up a legal thing. It says, uh, res respect the rights of others and do not use screen record to record content that might violate the copyright privacy of other application law. So they're basically don't saying, don't use this to copy Netflix. That's what they're telling you to do with this thing. So that's the same thing I'm going to tell you guys to do. Don't use your capture card and copy Netflix. Don't do that. You're going to get in trouble. Don't do it. All right. But that's basically that says here. But so there's a built-in screen recorder on this phone. So if you guys don't want to do any of the shit I'm talking about with Streamcast, you can literally just use the built-in screen recorder and it will record while you're playing games and doing everything anyways. The only reason I don't want to use the built-in screen recorder is because it impacts the performance on the game. So if I want to do a gameplay of a game like um, XCOM, Enemy Unknown, which you guys know I play a lot of this shit on my phone. I mean, I start, I'm going to start a brand new save file so you guys see how I play. Or like um, Hero Academy, Sonic, or Terraria, or whatever these games. If you guys want to see me play these games without it impacting like the frame rate, the only way to do that legitimately is actually by using the capture card because that capture card is not going to really be using like using that much resources compared to actually using the screen capture on the phone, which is going to use a lot more memory off the phone and it's going to use RAM. So it's going to be capturing right into the phone. And that application itself is going to be using RAM, which is going to impact RAM usage for the game you might be using, which XCOM and some of these other games on the mobile phones use a whole lot of RAM, as you guys know. So, there you go. You can hear with the Untitled Game Show. I know it's a very long video, but we can go over it one more time. If you guys want to connect your Sony Xperia Z3 to your PS4 controller or to your PlayStation 3 controller, what you guys need to do is go inside your application folder, go to Settings, go to Xperia Connectivity, and then PlayStation 3, DualShock 4, and click whichever one. If it's a DualShock 4, you just basically press the two buttons. If it's a PlayStation 3, you need to use that wire. And once you use that wire, you're all set to go. If you want to connect it through HDMI um, using this Chromecast, all you guys need to do is have a Chromecast, which is 30 bucks. You can get it for cheap as $20 on eBay. So if you don't want to play, you get it even cheaper if you buy it used. And if you buy it used, it probably still work because it's just an HDMI cable that uses Wi Fi. And that's all you basically need. If you don't have a Chromecast, um, if you don't have um, a Sony Xperia phone, you can use the application AllCast, which I talked about before. Like I said, I'm sorry that it wasn't working too well in this video, but AllCast really does work. I just don't know if it's the battery issue is because I'm connecting to so many different things right now that I'm doing a lot. I am doing a lot. And it'll be a lot more simpler when you guys are doing it. Um, and basically, if you wanted to capture your gameplay at the same time, you need an HDMI splitter. And you need an HDMI capture card. It could be the Avery Meteor, it could be the Roxio, it could be the um the one that this is one that everybody loves that is just not for me. Elgato. I know a lot of big people are big fan of Elgato. Elgato is just I haven't found an Elgato that I like personally. So I always like hardware based in inside the computer capture card. So that's why I went with Avery Meteor up there, guys. Um obviously I'm running a GTA 980, which doesn't really matter at this point, but I'm just saying it anyways. Um, if I was going to get an external capture card, it's going to be the Avery Meteor Live Gamer Portable, but that's going to be for another video, and I'm going to need to, I'm, I'm going to do something with that too, guys. That's going to have a whole other array of ways to capture. Basically, I want the ability to capture any device I own to show you guys YouTube videos. That is the ultimate goal. If there's a game application I want to review on my phone, I want to be able to show you guys that stuff. So we can hear with the Untitled Game Show, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I'm sorry about the stuff that didn't work and I'm sorry that it went so long, but at least I explained everything exactly in detail. And if I didn't, I will try to go over it in the description of this video so you guys have all the equipment you might need and all the stuff you might want to actually do this stuff. I'm out of here for now. Peace out, guys. Laters. Once again, thank you, Better Get Dave, for all the support you've given the channel through the donating to help me get the keyboard and mouse combo right here, guys. Later, guys.